Het die ook kan zien, is daar niet aan op. We hebben de kinderen die komen. We hebben communist lijn. We hebben radisch communist. Radisch communist is a red outside, white inside. You see, and when you read about it, you read in the same, in 1920, he says, what do you talk to us about the worker state? If it was a real worker state, then those talks, actually Africa would have been alive. There would have been a withering away of the state, there would have been a withering of the union at the same time. But what we have, and here he formulates 1920, we have a bureaucracy that is the form worker state in a peasant surrounding. And this is a much more realistic picture of the real horrible world in which they face in 1920. And the real tragedy of Lenin's the last few years, you know, that he fights and fights and he doesn't know really how to stop the rising bureaucratic wave. He turns around and says we have 4,700 communists in the administration there, in the central government, central administration. But we have 30,000 old Paris bureaucrats. And he says, not only this, even the party itself become more and more bureaucratic. And the last straw, of course, that really broke Lenin's heart, in a way, was when uh, the, uh, what in, or John O'Keefe said, that was a leading uh, Bolshevik, a Georgian one, beat a party member. He used physical fight, a physical force, you know, to beat some Georgian. And you see, why is all Lenin was terribly important? For Lenin, of course, it was terribly important because all the assumptions about working class activities, Self-activity of the working class is connected also with the national question. It means that in Georgia, the Georgian will control their destiny. It means that in Uzbekistan, the Uzbekistan will control their destiny. If you have only one party, the right of self-determination becomes a piece of paper that's not worth even a piece of paper. If there is one party and there is no inner party democracy. And that's why you find that Lenin in 1922 contacts uh, Stotsky and says to Totsky, we must fight against the uh, bureaucracy and he gave Totsky three notes in order for Totsky to raise it at the 12th Congress of the party. The 12th Congress was in uh, 1923. And he gave those notes in order to oppose Stalin and to oppose Ojolokizhe because Ojolokizhe was very close to Stalin. And he could oppose the bureaucracy. And he gave those notes to Totsky. Totsky in the 12th Congress didn't use those notes. It's very sad. I understand actually why Totsky didn't use it. He said, I didn't use it in, those, in this conference because I was frightened that people would say, I'm going to go for Lenin's mantle. And because Lenin had his last, uh, uh, what's his name, attack, you know, uh, in um, March 1923, Totsky found it, you know, personally uncomfortable to come and raise the battle against the Stalinist bureaucracy. There was another reason, of course. Totsky misunderstood, really, the role of Stalin. Totsky thought that the real danger is in Zenobia and Kamiya, because Zenobia and Kamiya were the softies of 1917. Well, when you look at Lenin, Lenin understood in his testament, he said, the keys are two key men in the central committee, Totsky and Stalin. Stalin is bureaucratic, is too rude, that was the footnote that he put under there, is too rude to have such important party position. He has to be removed. When it comes to Zenobia and Kamiya, Lenin really patronized. He says it is not accident that Zenobia and Kamiya were very soft, in 1917, the opposition to the Soviet Revolution. But still, still they are not the, the great danger. The tragedy of course, when you look at Lenin the last two years, the last two years of Lenin was still fighting for the primacy of the working class when the working class was integrating the heart, in, 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 disintegrating all around him. And that's why the tragedy of Lenin on the question of the trade unions, that's the tragedy of Lenin in Kronstadt, this is the tragedy of Lenin in Georgia. It is a really a tragedy because the primacy of Lenin was the primacy of the working class. And you can't have much without the working class. You can have many things without the working class. You can be a great scholar without any giving a damn about whether the working class is active or not. You can not march and you're upside down. You can read Lenin and Trotsky and all the rest of them. You can be a marvelous, great scientist and knowledgeable. One thing you can't be, you can't be a real Marxist. Because the center of Marxism is activity of the class. And the tragedy really, the last two years of Lenin, are really the tragedy of a really revolutionary leader that left the class in 1917 and find the whole thing disintegrating all around him. Now the last point I want to speak about Lenin really as an artist, and I think it's very, very important to understand what I mean by that. You see, if Marxism is a guide to action, then Marxism is not only a science, but an art. And I'm terribly sorry that I find so many Marxists that really, when they approach Marxism, they approach it in the science. Now, because the science, if you speak about using it in terms of technique, in terms of changing the world, then the act of imagination is terribly important. People tell
tell you that Lenin had a fantastic intuition. He imagined that he must have been a very great dreamer. That's a lot of rubbish. To have intuition, you need two things. You need, first of all, a real imagination. But you need a science and experience to discipline your imagination. Because otherwise, you should be wise. And that's really what we speak about Lenin as being an artist of the revolution. He had a fantastic intuition. I mean, you can see from April 1917, from June, from July, from every day in the Russian Revolution, from every day of Russian history, as a matter of fact, you find the fantastic intuition of Lenin. But the intuition of Lenin, first of all, is a party of imagining, not to be quoting Marx and Engels. And then having the Marx and Engels, the experience of science, you know, to discipline the intuition, to discipline the imagination. That's really why the, the initiative is so important. And this is one of the things that we can learn, learn from Lenin. If you want to be a really good Lenin, for heaven's sake, don't do what he did. Because powers can do many things, they can't make a revolution. And the great thing about Lenin is that he was an artist, and a great artist don't seem to repeat. Great technicians repeat. I mean, any technicians can repeat. A great scientist, a great artist, doesn't seem to repeat. He creates, he uses the method in order to discipline his own imagination. And this is very, very important about Lenin. The last point I'll say is this, about why we make such a big fuss about Lenin. People will say, you know, for everything he was one man, and if he was one man, so what does it mean? Does God man make changes in world history? Now, I absolutely agree with Trotsky when he says, no Lenin, no October. And you say, why? I don't understand it. The working class of Russia would have been the same whether Lenin was alive or not. I mean, if Lenin was run over in February 1917 in Switzerland, you know, he died from TB in February 1917, the war would have been the same, the factories in Russia would have been the same, people said the working class would have been the same, the Bolshevik party would have been the same. But the fact of the matter is that what was necessary is to rearm the party in order to create new relations between the party and the class. Trotsky couldn't have done it because there's a very new boy not belong to the Bolshevik party until uh, June uh, 1917, and therefore he couldn't have done it. The party by itself couldn't have done it because it takes time. And the main thing about revolution is one thing revolution doesn't have, is time. You can't do it over five years, what you can do in five days. And therefore Lenin won in April, the April thesis. Somebody else would have done the same, but it would have taken three months, or six months, or seven months. Now it would have been too late. Lenin won the battle in July. Somebody else would have done it four months later, it would have been too late, etc. And therefore Lenin was central in the victory of October. Now Lenin was not only central to the victory of October, I believe that the death of Lenin was central, crucial, in the defeat of the revolution since, and a whole number of reactionary events that happened since. And I'll tell you why. Because when you meet, when you see the greatest event after the Russian Revolution was the revolution situation in Germany. Very important situation. In November 1923, the Communist Party of Germany had the majority of the industrial working class with them. They could have taken power. They were much stronger than the Bolsheviks in Russia in 1917. And when you ask Brandner, the general secretary of the Communist Party of Germany, it was in England for a few years ago, and I asked him this great question. Why the hell did you take power in Germany? You, you, you are the general secretary of the party. Why didn't you go and pose the question of power? He says, we were on the telephone to Moscow, and they told us not to. Now you see, I believe if Robert Luxemburg was alive in 1923, she wouldn't have been on the telephone. And if Lenin was alive in 1923, he would have given the meal of instruction. People say when they said Lenin was alive. He was alive physically. But from March 1923, Lenin didn't exist except as a vegetable. He couldn't speak, he couldn't hear, he couldn't do anything. And therefore Lenin was not active from March. That's why the death of Lenin was in March 1923, if you speak in political terms. I'm sorry to use those terms, but Lenin's political terms were March 1923, not uh, April, and not January 1924. You see, and that's why when you look to the question, you know, that not only Lenin was central to the Russian Revolution, but the death of Lenin was very central to the whole train of events from 1923 onwards, including the Stalinist reaction, including the Moscow trials, including the rise of Hitler, including a whole number of things. And that's why the death of one man or the life of one man is very, very important. And the last point, I really believe we should finish really with the one thing about Lenin is we need to study. I believe the one thing about Lenin is simply to study. And the very greatest tragedy is that people read only the small selection of articles, while the main thing about Lenin was his, his revolutionary role as a strategian and a tactics. And you can't really understand it unless you go through his little leaflets. The leaflets, the pamphlets, those are the marvelous things of Lenin, much more important in the totality than anything else, because this is really what the man was.